Oh, yes, you mentioned yes, yes. humans being afraid of robots, okay? And absolutely, I keep, absolutely. And I keep answering with my guests, right? Every week we keep answering from different angles, right? So you tell me, where do you see automation and blockchain as part of that movement, right? Where do you see yes. if it's really sticking and helping people? And where do you see some challenges still out there? Absolutely. I think if you look at uh, technology, Technology could either be, I mean, if technology was an elephant, if technology was an elephant, you could perceive technology as that, that entity or that machinery that helps you to do the heavy lifting. Say maybe you live in a distant village somewhere where education prospects are very limited and other developmental prospects are, are little. That elephant could be helping to do some heavy lifting, whether you are offloading goods off a truck that comes once a month to that village, or you are loading some goods that the village wants to send around the world. So you could perceive technology. It all begins here with the paradigm shift of your thinking. Are you seeing technology as enabling you to do the heavy lifting like that elephant that enables an interconnected trade between two villages across the world or the village and the big city? Or do you perceive yourself to be an end with very little to offer in a minuscule size and the elephant is technology, but it's about to crush you with its giant foot. I think it's very important what perception we have. Technology in our world, we see it as a very critical lever of development, both at a a personal level and at an economic macro level. Policymakers need to find out what it is. Policymakers need to frequent your lounge. Policymakers and government, the public and private sector, we have to make sense of it because one of the things that enhances automation anxiety or any anxiety is ignorance. So it's authentic talks like this where we go we're like, wait a minute, I never perceived that elephant that way. I always saw so it as the enemy out to crush me. But this elephant could help our village move a needle upwards in the global trade. I didn't see it that way. So awareness, discussions, engagement, dialogue, and just peeling away the, 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 the layers of ignorance as we become real as to the applications that are relevant to us, not to the other people, but to us, then we can see. It's not technology, it's actually a means to an end. Well said again, well said again, Shadar. So let's talk a little okay. bit about smart contracts, if you wish. Because yes. with, yeah, with some of the guests I spoke earlier this year, what they're finding out yes. out there is that people who want to deploy blockchain, they think they're ready, but yet their business is not digitized at all. And the first thing yes. they have to kind of start digitizing processes and understanding yes. what are the pitfalls. So what do you find yes. in your way of deploying and adapting blockchain? Where are these hurdles? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, blockchain comes face to face with our built in or innate need to address the burden of trust. The minute you speak trade between two villages, between two human beings, between two companies, between any other party, except more than one, and that's what trade is. Trade is that transaction between more than one party. I mean, you can't pay yourself. It's gonna get a bit weird if you do that. So the burden of trust when goods or money exchange hands, the burden of trust when research, uh, uh, when a body of research leaves one laboratory and ends up on another laboratory across the world, how do we police that? The burden of trust when exam papers leave one venue from where they were written to where they are marked, that burden of trust in between, the burden of trust when the US goes to election and vote counting begins, the burden of trust where maybe you order some makeup or maybe I order some aftershave. How do I know the very ingredients that shaped that aftershave? So the mystery element is what will enhance our anxiety, not, not automation anxiety, but just the anxiety. And that is why banking has reached a, a, a inflationary proportions where it is today, where they tell you, oh no, Shadrach, if you are sending maybe a loaf of bread to Irene across the world, that's why eight slices have to go missing. I go like, why? They go like, we are protecting it at this point. We are protecting it at that point. And then we need five uh, uh, 
a, 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 a SWAT team of five to protect that loaf of bread. Then we needed 20 auditors. Then they're just lay, adding layers and layers of protection and protectionism mechanism. So smart contract and blockchain are saying, listen, if Irene is having an event across the world and my team and I send their loaf of bread or we send their olives, if we have a smart contract, that shows that by the time the olives arrive, her payment will, will self-automate and it will end up in our account. The, 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 the tax revenue involved in that transaction will self-automate and we won't need 20 banks or 20 middlemen. So blockchain and the future is such that it will aid us to address the age-old burden of trust. Could you really trust when they say it's 100% Jews? Who did the who did the the, the 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 count? Who did the measuring? Could you really trust when they say your 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 cosmetics are harmless? So the burden of trust, where you deploy the distributed ledger from source to consumer, from from origin to 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 to, to final destination, that ledger uh, woven in between with the smart contract, they self-automate and relieve us of of burden where we can take redeploy that same time spend it with family before COVID and before uh, hyper digitization that we are going through you had things like uh, some something that was very popular in the workplace the work-life balance I think the work-life balance is a cry for help to say we either don't enough, have enough time or we have mis misplaced our priorities so and the truth is it's not an easy equation to solve how is blockchain helping us blockchain is alleviating how many meetings were to show up with for audit control for board governance for corporate governance now a lot of things are automated suddenly i can spend more time with my family suddenly i can spend more time in the strategy unit in the penthouse suite in the in the top floor where i envisage the future suddenly i'm, I'm no longer trapped in the operational machinery so thanks to blockchain and and take and, and taking off taking off our hands the burden of trust and traceability and transparency.